looked into the coffin of a man who was once great. At least that's what I hear. But the cancer ravaged him until his bones crumbled to dust. The family then wondered how the people at the funeral home would be able to make him look like him. And as the family walked into that room, they all held their breath for more than more reasons than just death more reasons than just their last look, their last viewing of a man that they lost. Now looking at him once again like he's got meat on his bones. When the service started, we all had to follow the reverend's laments by all periodically proclaiming, Lord, have mercy. The man with the collar would talk. I would wonder what it would be like to hold the job of applying makeup to the dead, to try to make them look less dead. Puff the cheeks, apply face paint to give them color. Lord, have mercy. Beforehand, a string of older firemen came to us before the coffin with small black bands over each of their little badges. One guy said, when the fire station started, before the town even had a fire station, he used his old red truck with ladders tacked to the sides and a trailer to haul a barrel of water. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. The man with the collar started a hymn. Everyone in this small town knew the lines and sang along like little lemmings. And I used to remember these lines from my childhood, but I have no reason to say anything like this except when people need something, anything, to make them feel that their life doesn't have to end. Lord, have mercy. The man with the collar mentioned the, to the room and reminded the room that people were created for life, that death was not a part of the plan, but stifled the overwhelming desire to caress the one you loved, now in a coffin, for the coldness would be too stark a reminder. Lord, have mercy. I wanted to try to look at him in the coffin from a different angle, Maybe then the deceased wouldn't look more real. Maybe then I wouldn't see him there with a lack of hair from the chemo gone wrong. Maybe then I wouldn't see his hands clasping rosary beads. Lord, have mercy. I remember the string of people waiting to meet us before they proceeded to the coffin, which reminded me of the procession of people waiting to congratulate a bride and groom immediately after their wedding ceremony. But in this macabre receiving line, all of the funeral attendants were repeatedly saying to us, I'm sorry for your loss. And I wonder how many times the man in the coffin had to say those words in his lifetime of service, and how hollow those words were when he spoke them, when the words seemed so stifling. And I think of how people say this when nothing else can express how anyone is feeling, especially when people don't know how to feel anymore. Lord, have mercy. The chants now stopped. The Knights of Columbus stopped their constant repeating prayers for the painted man in the coffin to help us justify the pain we don't know how to deal with. Lord, have mercy, was all I could think, not as a call to a higher party, but to give empty words and an empty time with too many injustices in this living death scene. We're all players in this charade, making up death in a way that we want to believe is not ghoulish, so that we can keep telling ourselves unless we choose to ignore the macabre while unsettled lives are still around us. We mourn or cry, and as we just try to fit all these pieces together into this puzzle of our lives, and to those who believe, and even to those who don't, these words are the only fitting words to think or to feel. Lord, have mercy.